Hello, pod people. I'm DA, and welcome to Millennial Edition. Thanks for joining us. In this episode, we will be discussing demagogues and false prophets now that our nation is preparing for the next presidential election. Remember to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter to be a part of the discussion. Okay, so let's dive right in. So if you all have been following the news, you probably have now seen the preparations for the next presidential election are underway, as candidates have been steadily announcing their intentions to run for president. And so as expected, we are seeing, whether on the news by political pundits or just on social media, large debate and conversations about who should be our next leader. And just by the types of conversations that I'm seeing, especially the ones happening online, I'm not sure that our nation is able to identify a demagogue or false prophet. So let's make sure that we are all on the same page so we can make better decisions on who we let lead us. So let's start with some definitions for what we are talking about. A demagogue is a person, typically a political leader, who seeks support by appealing to the desires and prejudices of ordinary people rather than by using rational argument. Similarly, a false prophet is a religious term. That means a person who falsely claims the gift of prophecy or some divine inspiration, but really uses that gift for evil ends. So for reference, if you are a Christian or a Catholic, you probably have seen the term in the verse Matthew 7:15 when Jesus was basically giving one of his TED Talks, also known as his Sermon on the Mount series. And he was basically instructing the crowd to, in quote, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves, you can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit." End quote. So like I was saying before, I'm worried that even after the election of Trump and our knowledge of historical examples like Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, our nation is still unable to identify a demagogue or a false prophet and are quick to follow dangerous people right off a cliff. Because if we are still unable to identify and appropriately deal with a demagogue, we will continue to be vulnerable to them and their devastating consequences. Trump is not going to be the last demagogue who seeks the presidency. And I fear if America elects another one, it will result in the destruction of our society. History has been clear on what happens to societies that follow demagogues and false prophets. Everything gets destroyed in the end because demagogues and false prophets do not care for the well-being of people, only for the power and control over them. So let's identify some signs of a demagogue or false prophet so that we can avoid them. The first thing to know is that their brand is hate. Their platforms are built entirely on hate. They speak, breathe, and write hate. And they convince large groups of people to hate. And that hate is usually the hate of oppressed and marginalized group. Which brings us to our next sign. They seek to divide groups of people or they will exacerbate a divide between communities if one is already there. And they typically structure it by telling one group that they are the victim of the other group to marginalize and scapegoat that group. Unity among diverse groups makes it harder for demagogues and false prophets to be effective. So division makes it easier because groups fighting amongst each other are more prone to accept extremism. As Machiavelli put it, divide and conquer or dividing for forces from each other makes both forces weaker to the leader. The us versus them rhetoric makes it easier for a demagogue or false prophet to enact policies that are inhumane. Which brings us to the next sign. They almost always rationalize their hatred and vile behavior under the guise of religion and divine right. You know, people who claim to know Jesus but will deny the LGBTQ plus community the right to marry because, after all, it's against their religion. They always use religion and God to justify cruelty because they know people are less inclined to question their religion and or God. Which brings us to our next sign. 
They are hypocrites because they do not believe in any way that the rules apply to them. They can go after the LGBTQ community and say they are undermining the institution of marriage while simultaneously cheating on their spouse with a person of the same sex because ultimately they are above the law and are consequences and they believe somehow they have outsmarted everyone so no one will find them out and if someone tries, they'll smash and suppress any questioning or dissent. Which leads us to our next sign. They know that media is the most useful tool to spread extremism and hate, and they use propaganda and lies and gaslighting to the utmost. But they will use any means necessary, even the most vile means, to smash, suppress, bully, and intimidate any media that challenges them and offers an opposing viewpoint. Because after all, opposition is bad for business. So if and when it comes around, they simply use their platforms to show that they are the victims of unfair treatment by the media. By turning the conversation towards their own victimhood, they don't have to address their vile behavior, which is why, and this leads into the next sign, they never ever apologize or take responsibility for their actions, except in rare cases when it benefits them. They are never sorry for the things they say and do and will happily do it again if they know they can get away with it. And last, but certainly not least, and probably one of the most glaring signs, is that they make large, grandiose promises, especially about a solving a crisis or issue, but have no intention on keeping that promise. They also do not have any real, demonstrable, science-based evidence on any of their solutions when they do offer them. And as we said before, their solutions are almost always saturated in their brand of hate. And when someone, you know, like the media, challenges them on it, they respond with anger, aggression, or hate because they are unable to defend their positions. So rather than engage in honest, good faith debate, they either avoid debate altogether or simply suppress it. I can see why people follow after demagogues and false prophets so easily. Demagogues and false prophets will endear themselves to the people who agree with them and whom they deem, you know, worthy and make them feel like they are a part of a greater system. They know which groups of people to prey on. They know who is most vulnerable to them. They seem to prey on groups of people who are financially vulnerable, either struggling to pay the bills or groups who are extremely greedy, just like them. They seem to prey on people they know or have demonstrated some sort of bigotry and racism. And then they provide this group of people a safe space to affirm and allow their bigotry and racism to grow. Demagogues and false prophets are very good at making themselves look and sound like the mirror image of the group they wish to prey on because after all, like the saying goes, imitation is the highest form of flattery and demagogues and false prophets know this and it works. So my appeal to the public, not just in the millennial generation, but in all generations, be careful, be on the lookout for demagogues and false prophets. In this new social media paradigm where demagogues and false prophets can amass large followings, let's consider what Jesus said in his TED talk or the Sermon on the Mount series. We have to inspect the fruit better. I mean, seriously, if we are willing to put more time and energy in picking out the best produce in a grocery store, then we are willing to in picking the best leader, then we really have a problem and we have to change that. Let's get in the habit of inspecting those who want us to follow them. If someone is talking about making our nation more secure, but they reject gun reform, which of course we know guns poses a great threat, and instead has a solution to marginalize the Spanish speaking and brown communities by building walls and separating them from their children and throwing them into cold, freezing internment camps, that person's a demagogue. If a person claims to love Jesus and all of his creation, but supports conversion therapy, which is cruelty meant to humiliate and torture the LGBTQ community, that person is a false prophet. If a person claims to be a part of the resistance against hate, but claims that the only way to fight against hate is to be dirty and play them at their own game and use hate as a defense, that person is a demagogue. If a person claims to believe God for their own and the nation's prosperity, but asks their congregation for millions of dollars to fund expensive mansions and cars and planes, that person is a false prophet. 
If a person from a marginalized group uses their platform to either dismiss or blame the marginalized group for their own oppression, instead of fighting against bigotry and hatred of the marginalized group, that person is a demagogue. If a person from a marginalized group speaks the language of hatred and is dividing the marginalized group against itself and responds to criticism with more aggression and hatred, that person is a demagogue. If a person claims to love and be an ally to a specific gender, but mocks the Me Too movement and its leaders while bullying and harassing those who have bravely stepped forward as survivors, that person is an asshole. But more importantly, that person is a demagogue. So when you come across these demagogues and false prophets, run the other way. Get out of there. Get away from them. Do not follow them. Not in real life, not on social media, or any platform they may have. Remember, they feed off of the, of the media. They need you to listen to them. Even if you don't agree with them at first, they know your fascination with their hatred will eventually desensitize you to their hatred. And that's when they just kind of swoop in. They can make hatred look delicious and desirable, like. A a decadent chocolate cake. So don't feed their hatred. Call it out and run the other way. Literally, run the other way if you have to. A true leader will not rise to power solely by their money, their hatred, or dividing groups or communities against each other. A true leader will unite the people. A true leader knows that truth, love, and justice will always be the cure to society's ills. A true leader speaks the language of truth and reconciliation, not more hatred and vengeance. A true leader appeals to what is best within us when they spot our vulnerabilities and weaknesses. A true leader knows that criticism is a part of growth and when it is justified, knows how to apologize and do better. A true leader may not like the media, but will still respect that media. A true leader knows what Dr. King meant when he said that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. So a true leader knows she or he will never be above the law or justice. So we are about a year and a half away from choosing a new presidential leader, and we really need to get this right. Do not make the same mistakes we made in 2016. Do not ignore your common sense and instincts about those who seek positions of leadership. It is imperative that we fully inspect the fruit. If we don't, it will have devastating consequences on our nation and our world. Demagogues and false prophets, as history has shown us, have all fallen in some way either very dramatically and sometimes often very violently. But as history has shown us, they pull all of society down with them and it takes years to recover. Followers of demagogues and false prophets, they pay an incredibly high price for their fealty. So let's all identify the demagogues and false prophets and run from them, mute them, and certainly do not vote for them. Instead, let's focus all of our good energy, our time, and our consideration amplifying and following truly good leaders. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Millennial Edition, and I look forward to engaging with you all soon.